Hey there game developers, it's me Titan Hex and I am back with another tutorial. This time we're going to start covering conditional branches. This is one of the most important parts of RPG Maker uh, and most any game development really. So covering these is going to be super important to getting our ideas out and to actually creating this whole game that we're going to come up with. Uh, well, you're going to come up with. It's, it's truly your game. And whatever ideas I offer you, take them uh, as you as you feel necessary. Make sure you just come up with the best ideas you can for the game you want. So hopefully this segues you into that awesome experience of coming up with a game idea and just exploring that. Next, let's see. The first thing to do is obviously to get into your contents uh, in your event editor. Just open up some sort of event, open up the contents, and then get into the event commands. And you're going to find conditional branches under flow control. So once you find flow control, conditional branches right there at the top on the first tab, you want to click that and you're going to get a whole bunch of options. So we're going to go ahead and go over what a conditional branch is by first creating some something random and then, um, and then, you know, just exploring it, taking a look at it. So I'm going to click some buttons and I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see this if it's going to say if so a it's always going to say if uh, the way a conditional branch works is it's considered a, a piece of logic. It, it, something sort of like it, it's programming, which is based all on log logic. And there's some English language in there that you can build up off of to sort of understand it uh, as a person. So when we Think of if, we want to think of cause and effect. We want to think of uh, the, the if or because or anything like that. It, it's a branching idea that, that can happen. So once we look into the conditional branch, we're going to be able to understand quite a few things about the game development engine. Now, whenever you've made a choice in a video game, whether it's very small or very big, it's usually because of a conditional branch allowing you to do that. So think of any time you were able to hit controls, you were able to go up and down in a menu, any time you were ever, ever able to make any choice in a game, um, whether it's something in the controls or the, uh, the decisions you make in a text box or a choice box, um, the ability to fight or not fight just any choice it, it's based off a conditional branch it's something that you the player makes a decision to do so that is basically what a conditional branch is it's a because it's a if something then something it's um, cause and effect so all of those are conditional branches uh, we just created a conditional branch that says if a certain party member is in the party something will happen. And I can show you how to build up on that, but we just need to understand what it is. There is a few different choices in the conditional branch flow control. The conditional branches that we have um, are only limited by your imagination and switches and variables are some of the most important parts that we can put into a conditional branch. And we're gonna go over those in another, to well, actually, you know what? Uh, we're gonna go over those soon very soon actually in this tutorial we're not going to cover them um, we're, we're not going to cover variables in depth but we can cover switches very quickly and easily um the variables however they're, they're a little bit more complex but not complex really at all uh they're very simple as well and we can just talk about them real quick but right now we're going to just take a look at some of the other options here we have a timer we can check if a, the timer is at a certain amount and if you remember correctly, we can create a timer here under game progression and we can start a timer and choose how long that timer goes. And then we can use this conditional branch to see if the timer is at a certain, um, a certain point, if it's maybe hit zero or if it's um, j just under one minute or anything like that. So we can do that. Um, that's one of the things in conditional branches we can do. We can also do actors, we can check a whole bunch of different parameters about actors, which basically a parameter is any kind of a status that they have. Um, maybe it's their health, their life, their um, 
their name, everything. So their state, class, everything right here. So we can check if they're in the party, if they have a specific name, if they are a specific class, a spe specific skill, weapon, armor, or state, if they have one of those. And then we can just create some things from that. Um, we also have enemies. We can check if a special enemy, and this, by the way, this uh, is mainly for battle. This really isn't going to be of much use outside of battle. So this is gonna come up blank in battle, or unless we are in a battle. So as you can see, this is useless uh, for now, but we can check if a monster has a certain state or if he's appeared. And when we go over certain parts of uh, event battling, we'll, we'll go more, or event, yeah, event battling events. We'll go over this a little bit more. So we can check for a few things here. Um, we can check if the event, uh, a character is always an event that we make. These are called, uh, just because it says event editor, doesn't mean it's not a character. So almost everything you make, it's gonna be considered a character if it's on the map in a tile. Um, so this is a way to check if the player or the character is facing a certain way. And that's the player on the map or maybe an event on the map, um, anything like that. So then we can check if the player is in a specific vehicle and that's right here. And we can check if they have, the party has a certain amount of gold, if the party has a certain item, weapon, armor, or if the player has a certain button held down. It says is pressed down, but this is uh, this really is more about if the button is being held down rather than if it's just being pressed once. So then we have the scripts and we can do quite a few things with scripts, but until we get into scripting, uh, we just need to know that it exists and that's it. And that's kind of what we can do. So we also have one more checkbox down here and that's the create else branch. And we can create an else um, statement. So an else statement goes inside an if statement, which is your conditional branch. And it just kind of says, if something is some way, we'll do this. But if it's not that way, we're gonna do something else. Um, so we can check to see if the player is in the party and then we can create something to check to see if he's not in the party. So it's basically checking to see if the opposite is true. Um, and then we can do something specific if the opposite is true. And it's very useful to know that. Well, it's not even just the opposite. It, it's basically anything but what we said is true. Uh, that can help us create even more options. So. Make sure you check or uncheck this if you are creating a, uh, a set of things that happen if the condition isn't met. And that's kind of how it works. When we say okay, it's going to add this else. Otherwise, uh, if we remove it, it removes the else. Uh, and it basically, that's just how it works. So we're checking to see if Harold is in the party. Uh, if he is, then all we have to do is put things inside of this um, part of the contents, this little one that's extended just a little bit farther, we can start putting things inside of this. Um, and we do that by just creating more things. So if Harold is in the party, we can show Harold's face, uh, whoever Harold is, I think that's Harold. So we can say, hey buddy, it's me, Harold. And if he's not in the party, um, we can create an else, we, if we want something else to happen, if he's not in there, we can just add this else and say, hey, where's Harold? Boom. So that's just kind of how it works. We create these um, ifs and else, and we sort of just put extra, we put conditions inside of them, and it just creates this sort of way that the, the story begins to change or that the player makes decisions. Uh, for example, if we wanted to check for uh, up being held, we can make certain things happen if the player is holding up, just like a control, uh, a control that you program into a game. So you can make it so that when you hold up, uh, another event moves or, or a certain thing happens, or maybe the player has to hold up until a bar fails. So many things we can do. And that's the whole point of the if statement right there cool things like that so one of the things is that the as the player progresses through the story and makes the choice to progress the story 
we want the story to start to evolve and become more complex and to show certain text. And that's really where the if statement comes into play and its most important parts. So we're going to take a, well, I'm going to go over switches and variables real quick here. Um, and then we're going to have a real crash course on those later. So the switches is super duper simple. A switch, just think of a light switch. Now imagine that you have a light switch and it's not attached to anything. It's just, it's just a thing that you can flip up or down. Um, so let's just take a look. So basically it's, it's like something you can flip up and down and, and it's not attached to anything. Um, so imagine how useless that is. You can flip this switch on and off all day and it'll never ever do anything. And that's super useless until you put it inside of a condition or a conditional branch. So once we put it in, we can check to see if the light switch is on and off. So imagine you take your light switch that's not attached to anything, you stick some wire in it, and you, we, you just roll it out into a light, and you stick it into a, a light bulb or something like that. And now when you flip the switch up uh, and it's on, the light bulb shines, and when you flip it off, the light bulb turns off. And that sort of wiring and everything like that that's what a conditional branch is and that's why conditional branches are so important they check things like that and they create this whole circuit of light switches and things like that and that's that's why you have to learn these conditional branches before you can ever use a switch so once you have those hooked up a switch is basically that light switch on off on off you can turn it on and off all day and it won't do anything so you create a switch just by opening up this menu, uh, naming it uh, new thing. Uh, it, it's You're going to come up with something uh, as you play the game. Right now, we're just using this as an example. It's just an easy on off. Um, whether it's on or off, you can choose what happens. It doesn't always have to not do something when it's off. You can have it do something the opposite. It's like true or false zero or one, it can uh, never be both things. It can only be one of two things. So that's just some ways to think of it. And we can use the control switches to turn it on, on and off. But unless we hook up a conditional branch, such as this, uh, where we check if the switch is on, it won't ever do anything. So imagine if I separated these two and I made it so that you have to go to this side of the island and talk to this person. Hello. So you have to talk to this person and then we turn the switch on because all switches always start it off. The switch is always started off, remember that? So we have to go talk to him and this turns the switch on and then we can check to see if the switch is on. So we say if new thing is on, and we're gonna show text. Hey there, buddy. And we're gonna throw a new actor in. And the only way they're gonna, so everything inside of this is going to happen if the switch is on. And the only way to turn the switch on is to go talk to this guy. So your journey would be to run over here, talk to this person, and then go over here, talk to this person, and then they'll tell you, hey there, buddy. But if you don't do anything, uh, if, you, if you don't go talk to this guy first and you try to talk to this person, nothing's going to happen because the switch isn't on. It's off. And everything inside this will not happen. So that's sort of how switches work. Uh, they're very simple, uh, just like that, a light switch, bam, bam, on, off. Without the conditions or the conditional branch, it will never do anything. And that's sort of the importance, the, the way conditional branches work, and that's why they're so powerful, is that they allow the game to regress like that. Um, we also can do a whole bunch of other things. We can check to see, uh, we can make it so that, say, the player adds this person to the party. So control, let's see change party member we can add uh we, we'll just add harold and then we can check to see if harold is in the party so conditional branch 
can go over to the actor is in party and we can see if Harold and we can create an else one. So inside it, if we say, if Harold is in the party, we say, hey, Harold, let's, oh, let's go on an adventure. Whereas if he's not in the party, this person will say, go get Harold so we can start our adventure. So until you, when you go talk to this person, they'll, if you don't have Harold in your party, they'll tell you to go get Harold. Whereas uh, if you go talk to this person, you'll get Harold and then you can go talk to her and you'll start your adventure. And that's just sort of how conditional branches work and the very basics of what they can do. They're these little logical if statements. If something is occurring, do this. Otherwise, do something else. Uh, they're, think of the word because. This is happening because of this. Um, it's very logical. Just think think with your mind and, and you can problem solve a lot of the issues if you just go through uh, your lines of code here and just think about what's happening. You can problem solve a lot of your own issues by just thinking hard and looking at what you're doing and uh, just thinking of the logic. So that's sort of how it works. That's, that's pretty much conditional branches in a nutshell. It's the fact that they do so much and that a branching idea can do all that that makes them so powerful and unique and awesome. So that's pretty much the tutorial on conditional branches. I hope it's been useful for you. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Get ready for those next tutorials where we go over variables and switches. And just, uh, it's going to be an awesome time. So variables are very simple as well. They just, they're storage for information. You store information in them. And those are going to be very simple to go over as well. They're, without a conditional branch, just like a switch, they can't do anything. So again, we'll be hitting up those soon. And you know what? I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.